Welcome and good evening. It is so lovely to see you all sitting out there here to support and celebrate the class of 2022. My name is April Camuso and I am principal here at Hopkins. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the families of our graduates, faculty and staff, school committee members, trustees, administration, and Hadley Media for making tonight possible. And of course, a big shout out to our graduates, the class of 2022. Thank you for all of your hard work that landed you here tonight. The class of 2022 has emerged from a pandemic world stronger and better than ever. They have practiced early the art of resilience and confronting a fear of the unknown. And good for them, no? As they look out at the horizon of their future, I hope they remember that all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. The parts that they will play will be amazing, beautiful, challenging, and worthwhile. And I am confident that each part they will play will be with their entire heart and soul. These classic lines by our beloved William Shakespeare are some of the soundest advice that I can impart. So I will leave it at that and let our other speakers deliver their own much wiser words to you. I would like to introduce one such remarkable person who is ready to take on the world. Our valedictorian this year is Kyle Ucknett. A leader of his class and peers, Kyle is a genuine person whose contributions to his class have been numerous. And so, here to share his address to the class is our valedictorian, Kyle Agnes. Thank you, Ms. Camuso, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank our teachers and staff, friends, and family for finally helping us to make it to this moment. I feel very honored to stand before you and to represent a class full of loving, caring, and devoted individuals. Many of us go all the way back to preschool where life was simpler. We would eat rainbow bread together, and at that time we didn't even understand the concept of numbers. We didn't know how far away 2022 was, but also how fast it would arrive. Our years at Hadley Elementary School flew by until our last day, which culminated in the burying of the time capsule right next to the outside door we all walked into tonight. And I'm sure we all remember what went down there. <laughs> yes, maybe there was some yelling, some punching, some swearing, and some shovel throwing. But this is not actually a common occurrence for the class of 2022. Instead, whenever I think of my class, I think of how united we are. We're not exactly your typical high school class with the drama, the infighting, and the divisions. We have grown and learned together, rather. It always makes me feel good when I hear my teachers say, and I'm really sorry to any underclassmen and their families, but that we are the best class at Hopkins. <laughs> I'm sure there are memories and people that we'll all miss from Hopkins. For example, the positivity radiated by all the lunch ladies, Mr. Araya's interesting physics classes, and the constant olas from Senora in the hallway. There's also the librarian, Miss Beckett, who is so happy to see everyone who walks through the who walks through the library door and who is always offering us food and filling us in on the school buzz. There are also things I'm sure we won't miss as much. This includes, but is not limited to, walking down the hallways which are painted in a color that my brother describes as dehydrated yellow. <laughs> it could include the occasional fire drills set off by the smallest amounts of burnt food or the practically sub-zero temperatures that seem to be permanent in the dehydrated yellow hallways in the winter. And to the students who joined our class along the way, thank you for making all of our lives better. I was always happy to see new students join our class because it consistently exemplified how welcoming we were, no matter where they came from. These students would qu quickly go from lonely looking strangers sitting on the gymnasium bleachers on the first day of school to sitting with us at lunch going to Six Flags with us, and maybe even telling us how much they love ducks. I think that many of us learn the attributes of kindness and positivity early on thanks to our classmate and friend, Sam Pollard. Sam passed away in March of 2015 in fifth grade due to a rare disease that left him very weak and oftentimes out of school. But despite his illness, Sam was always a ray of sunshine, both in and outside of school. Now, I remember on several occasions, we would all be lined up in the hallway, ready to go to recess, silent as can be, and we watched as Sam proceeded down the hallway, 
controlling his electric wheelchair himself. Now, Sam being Sam, he loved to crash into the lockers and the doors on purpose, and he would swerve around in every direction, slowing down and speeding up, laughing hysterically the whole time. And although we were supposed to be silent, the students, as well as the teachers, would all erupt in laughter alongside Sam at his antics. I feel like the simple action of his displays all of his best qualities at once with how he got everyone to laugh and how the mood was lifted inside the hallway. Simply put, Sam would always remind others not to take life too seriously and that there's always something to laugh about. If anyone were to ask me what rules to live by, I would tell them exactly what Sam showed to the rest of us. Be kind and focus more on the funny, joyful moments rather than the somber ones. And that is what I believe is so special about the class of 2022. We've stayed on the positive side of what we've been through, and we've made each other's day by using humor. Now we have Georgios and Dominic, who can make themselves laugh on command about really anything, from beans to stage lights, for example. And their laughter surely is contagious, as I'm sure we've all experienced. And then we have Jared and Chris, whose humor is almost impossible to explain, but who managed to make even the most serious and intense people laugh. And for example, they've made even Mr. Marcinic laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and while our class enjoys being lighthearted and humorous, we can also be serious and driven. Before we know it, Eve will be on a huge boat guarding the coast of the entire country. Eli is probably going to be caring for injured people, maybe, because they were punched and or hit with a shovel. <laughs> Others, like Tia, will inspire and teach the next generation of children as an elementary school educator. Then there will be me as a possible chemistry major in a lab mixing two chemicals together and saying to myself, ooh, pretty colors. <laughs> but whatever path we choose, we will succeed as long as we do what is right for each one of us. As Ms. Lanham recently reminded me in my yearbook, you must always stay true to yourself. You don't have all the time in the world to do what feels right for you. And so, Hopkins Academy, class of 2022, go do what is best for you, not what is best for others. Simply live for yourself and happiness will find you along the way. You will be great. Thank you. Tonight, we would like to recognize several of our seniors by presenting them with a variety of awards and scholarships. Hopkins has a long tradition of acknowledging seniors' accomplishments on this evening, and descriptions of all awards can be found in the program. Please also note that there is an error in the program under our National Honor Society student recognition. Colin Earl should be recognized as a part of this organization as well. As I call upon a recipient, the student will please come to the podium to receive their award. As some students will receive more than one award, please hold applause until after all awards for that student are read. Okay. So first, we have Ada Boutang. Ada has received the National School Choral Award, the Dwight History Prize, the Fanny G. Allen Award, the John Mish Senior Memorial Scholarship, the Frank E. Koloski Memorial Scholarship. Congrats, Ada. <laughs> Alpha Atende has been awarded with the Constance Ann Niedzielewski Memorial. <laughs> Amber Tucker has received the Hadley Young Men's Club Stanley Banis, the Sheriff Patrick J. Callahan Scholarship Award, and the Bridget A. Ryan Prize, Minnie R. Dwight. <laughs> Andrew Siaglo has received the Hadley Young Men's Club Stanley Banis, the Chet By Junior Athletic Baseball Award, the Sports Booster Club Athletic Awards, the Edward F. Kelly Memorial, the Paul W. Brown Senior Baseball Award, the James P. Reed Athletic Medal, and the Joseph and Mary Kineski Prize. <laughs> Carter Beckwith 
has received the Florence M. Reed English Prize and the Bud Nealon Award. <laughs> Colin Earl has received the Leon G. Jasensky Memorial Scholarship, the Joseph E. Kowal Jr. Memorial Scholarship, and the Tom Kazensky Memorial Scholarship. Dylan Vinton has received the Michelle Searles Scholarship, the Hadley People Interested in the Arts, and the Tom Hannigan Scholarship. <laughs> Elizabeth Rousseau has re received the Noreen Jacobus Tilly, the Eleanor Van Dorn Smith Scholarship. Eve Lanzafami has received the American Legion Scholarship, the Constance Higgins Alumni Prize, the Stanley and Stasha Kazera Memorial Scholarship, the Rotary Scholarship, the Michael R. Grabeck Jr. Memorial Scholarship, the Edward S. Kozier Award, and the Henry E. Ryan Arthur Ryan Award. Fatima Anja has received the Barbara G. and John S. Byron Scholarship and the James Robert Ryan Prizes. <laughs> Flannery Fettler has received the Sam Pollard Scholarship, the Edward Dudkowitz Training Scholarship, and the Nellie A. and John W. Sikowski Award. Gabby Dijak has received the Faculty Award, the Allen M. Daniels Memorial Award, Coaches Award, the Peg Dean Memorial Scholarship, the Florence Bank Scholarship, the Sports Booster Club Athletic Awards, the Sandra Walsh Kelly Memorial Scholarship, the Matthew Cushy Award, the Mary E. Kent Kennedy Award, and the Tom Kazensi Memorial Scholarship. Garv Patel has received the Barbara Konetsky Memorial Scholarship and the James Robert Ryan Prizes. <laughs> Gordon Cook has received the Richard A. Graves Memorial Scholarship, the John S. Simkowitz Memorial Scholarship, the Chet Bai Junior Athletic Soccer Award, the Joseph and Mary E. Zatira Memorial, and the Timothy Parsons Award. Grace Keeler has received the Hampshire, Franklin, and Hamden Agricultural Award, the George C. Hibbard Alumni Scholarship, and the Norman C. Barso Senior Award. Jared Venditti has received the Sam Koch Memorial Award. Catherine Amaya has received the May and Oscar Johnson Scholarship, the Lisa Marie Wiskevitz Memorial Award, and the Peter Allen Jekinowski Memorial Scholarship. <laughs> Kyle Uckneet has received the Hope Grange Youth Mathematics Prize, the John Philip Sousa Band Award, the Hadley Mothers Club Prizes, the Peg Dion Memorial Scholarship, the Michael R. Grabeck Jr. Memorial Scholarship, the Quincy Jones Scholarship Award, the Sandra Walsh Kelly Memorial Scholarship, the Deborah J. Kozier Memorial Award, the Emerson Prize, Burton P. Shores Memorial Prize, the Teddy S. Soldega Memorial Scholarship, and the Tom Kazensi Memorial Scholarship. <laughs> Marley Higgins has received the Hadley Mothers Club Prizes, the Marion Purdy Memorial Scholarship, the Sam Koch Memorial Award, the Golden Hawk Award, the Mary McGrath O'Brien Debating Prize, and the Nancy E. Malinowski Urgil Scholarship. <laughs> Megan Jolly has received the Teddy S. Soldega Memorial Scholarship.
Sarah Sikowski has received the John Natick Art Award. Tanner Selig has received the Hadley Education Association Scholarship, the Louis Armstrong Award, the Joseph Michael Konecki Jr. Award, the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, the Michael R. Graybeck Jr. Memorial Scholarship, Christopher M. Delisle Scholarship, the Woody Herman Jazz Ensemble Award, the Sam Pollard Scholarship, and the Bridget A. Ryan Prize. Tia Fighton has received the Paul A. Klamaski Soccer Award, the Margaret L. Kelly Memorial Scholarship, the Adolph and Mary Papinski Scholarship, the Edward F. Kelly Memorial. And Tyler Verity has won the John J. Papinski Scholarship. of this first step of award. Mr. Siago. Good evening. Tonight I have the opportunity to introduce my uncle John, who is on the Board of Trustees and will be presenting our Senior Scholarship Awards. John grew up in Hadley and graduated from Hopkins in 1988 and he's worked in technology for 30 years and served as the Director of Technology at the Hartford for the last 17 years. He currently lives in Hadley where he's raised his family and has played a tremendous role in this community. Please welcome my uncle and Board of Trustee member, John Earl. Thank you, Andrew. Well, how time flies. Good evening, my name is John Earl, and on behalf of the trustees, I'm honored to present the trustees scholarship to the class of 2020. Normally I'm a member of the selection committee, but this year I recused myself because my son and nephew are in this graduating class. Still, I'm excited to stand with these graduates to celebrate their achievements and usher them into the next stage of their lives. The trustees work behind the scenes with the primary goal of deepening, uh, of deepening our students' learning and enriching their experience. Beyond scholarship awards, we've granted more than $50,000 in the last three years towards teacher requests for new technology, classroom equipment, special events, trips, and activities. Tonight, we recognize those graduates who have demonstrated academic excellence while also contributing to the school and the community. This year, there were eight applicants, and I'm pleased to announce that all eight are scholarship winners. Five of these students achieved a 4.0 grade point average or better, and most of these earned a 3.6 or higher. I am presenting five levels of scholarships each level represents a step in the graduates' combined overall achievement. As I call your name, please come forward to be recognized. Three recipients have been selected to, uh, to each receive $1,000 award. Grace, Co Grace Keeler. Andrew Siaglo. <laughs> Colin Earl. The next scholarship for $2,000 is awarded to Gabriella Dijak. <laughs> and 
and Tanner Seelig. The third level for $2,400 is awarded to Fatima Anjum. The next awards are, reser are reserved for the top two recipients. $3,200 is awarded to Eve Lanzafami. And finally, $3,600 award to the valedictorian, Kyle Luckney. Thank you and congratulations to all the recipients. Good evening. I have the distinct honor of introducing our class speaker, Mr. Burns. The class of 2022 chose Mr. Burns because of his outstanding character, both as a teacher and a friend. We all know him as captain, and now I'd like to welcome him up at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Garv. Good evening, everyone. I consider it a great honor to be asked by the class of 2022 to speak tonight. Though I wish you would have given me a hint as to why you asked me ahead of time so that I would have known what you expected to hear. Since you didn't, I decided you're just simply going to get some Burns wisdom. I've been a teacher for a long time, nearly 18 years. And while I do not remember every student I have taught, I do have impressions of all of them that remain right here. Teenagers are fairly selfish creatures, but over the years I have come to recognize that for most of them it is just a phase that stems from the desire to assert their independence and yet, and sorry, and they do not yet know how to do so without sounding rude and ungrateful. But the truth is, is that they are grateful. They just don't tell you. I have told you all many times that I am not concerned with you learning the mundane aspects of history, such as people and dates. I am far more concerned with you learning something about humanity and how we are not only shaped by the events and ideas of the present, but also of the past. History books are filled with examples of people doing great things, like discovering penicillin, leading revolutions, and ending slavery. The problem, though, with focusing on these things is that it gives the impression that great historical figures just woke up one day, changed the world, as if, there was only, as if they had no other care in the world. As if the one thing they were best at and best known for was the only thing they ever did. It also ignores the billions of people who didn't make the history books, but who certainly were successful. What I'm getting at is that when we idolize people's success, we forget that they are human. We forget that they had bad days, that they had a first love, that they likely had more failures in their lives than great successes. And we forget that the thing for which they are best known may not even be the thing they cared most about. By idolizing the things that 
they did. Instead of admiring them as the flawed people they were, we are not only refusing to accept and learn from their mistakes, but we are also rejecting their humanity, which I think is a tragedy, because it is from their humanity that we can learn the most. For example, George Washington was a slave owner, which has traditionally not been discussed in history classes, which is, of course, unfortunate because later in life he realized that slavery was wrong and arranged for his slaves to be freed after his death. What changed his mind? I have no idea. But the fact that he did is what's important and, frankly, more important than anything he ever did as commander-in-chief of the Continental Army or as the first president of this republic because it is an example of how we can all be successful. We cannot all be famous historical figures, but we can all be successful if we are willing to change the definition of success and see it as a measure of our ability to change. The world is changing rapidly, too rapidly for some of us, and with change comes conflict. Our nation is seriously divided on many issues, but the same is true for many parts of the world. The question we should be asking is how do we navigate that conflict so that we can balance the pressure to be successful with the realities of life? I chose George Washington as a historical example for several reasons. First, everyone in this room knows why he's famous. And second, because I believe he is a prime example of what it means to be successful. He did not seek fame. He was not interested in power and titles. In fact, he gave them up willingly and specifically because he believed that his service to his country was not about him. It was about creating a better country for everyone. Everything we know about him confirms that he was a man of great humility, meaning he was able to recognize his limits and appreciate the worth of others, which is a trait I fear we are losing sight of in our society. Our culture used to value hard work, but that isn't true anymore. Instead, we value success, but success is a moving target. I have lost count of the number of students who have had a panic attack because they thought that anything other than an A meant they failed. And if you don't believe me, ask any student and teacher or teacher in this room. I fear that life has been reduced to a series of tasks, which somewhat ironically renders accomplishments meaningless because there is always going to be another task, and thus the vicious cycle of checking boxes and climbing the mythical ladder of success will continue, and we will never feel accomplished. We will never feel complete, and we will rarely feel joy. And I find that incredibly sad, because life can and should be joyful as often as possible. No one should ever be left to believe that they are second, that they are not worth your attention, or that they are less valued than any other person. The key to ensuring this about others and yourself is to approach your life with a deep sense of humility, appreciate your strengths, and rely on them to build a life for yourself but also accept your limitations and your flaws, not as a sign of failure or weakness, but as an opportunity to grow. When we recognize our flaws and seek to change them, it is at that point that we are truly successful. If I've said it once to you, I've said it a thousand times, life isn't about money, it isn't about houses or boats or power. It is not about stuff. Life is about relationships and forging memories with the people that we love. When we care deeply for someone, we do not believe that we are better than they are. 
We believe we're equals. We approach them with a sense of humility. And if we, sorry, we see them as equals. We approach them with a sense of humility. humility, And if we did that with every person we interact with, we would avoid the trap of making every conversation and every situation about ourselves which is what causes us to overreact and get angry. Rooting yourself in humility does not mean you don't care or that you will never be angry, but it will allow you to step back from the edge of anxiety and fear. It will allow you to see that in most cases, the things we perseverate on are just not that important. So to the class of 2022, I congratulate you on your accomplishment. I thank you for the trust you have placed in me as your teacher. And if you remember nothing else I have said tonight, please remember this. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And rest assured that the hope of your future does not hinge on the mistakes of your past or the length of your resume. It rests on your ability to treat people with the, dig- with the dignity and respect they deserve. And I hope that is what I have modeled for you over the last four years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burns. All right. I would like to welcome those who will present the diplomas for our graduates. Superintendent Dr. McKenzie, the chair of the school committee, Humira Fassi-Houdin, and Board of Trustees Representative John Earle. Students, as your name is called, please rise, gather your diploma, and then return to your seat. Tia Rose Biden. Gabriella Irene Dijak. Megan Elizabeth Jolly. Colin Malloy Earl. (laughs) Flannery Lee Fettler. Eve Avery Lanzafami. <laughs> Catherine Ryan Rousseau. <laughs> Dylan Howard Vinton. Ethan Connor Label. <laughs> Dominic Robert Orsini. <laughs> Carter Thomas Beckwith.
Kyle Stephen Upney. Marley Catherine Higgins. Andrew John Siaglo. Christopher David Foster. Tanner James Seelig. Gordon Big Peace Cook the Fourth. Jared Joseph Venditti. <laughs> Catherine Alejandra Amaya. <laughs> Angel Xavier Rodriguez. Grace Virginia Keeler. <laughs> Elizabeth Mary Rousseau. <laughs> Audrey Lashway West. Georgios James Alamonos. <laughs> Seth John Chartier. <laughs> Alpha Albert Etinde. Tyler Paul Verdi. <laughs> Fatima Anjum. <laughs> Adelaide Colette Boutte. <laughs> Amber Barbara Tucker. <laughs> Charles Cooper Joel Winch. <laughs> Sarah Grace Sikowski. Garb on Keith Patel. <laughs> and finally, in loving memory, we would like to recognize Samuel Nicholas Pollard as part of the class of 2022. <laughs> Congratulating the class of 2022. Thank you.
<clears throat> Good evening. My name is Colin Earl, and tonight I have the privilege of honoring this year's Distinguished Alumni Award. Before I do that, I would like to take a moment to thank my family, classmates, friends, coaches, faculty, and the Hadley community. Just over three months ago, I played my final basketball game in this very gym wearing a Hopkins uniform. This place was packed. We had community members of all ages along with the best student section in the area. The atmosphere was electrifying. Thanks, Andrew, for in that buzzer beater. <laughs> These were the best memories of my life. That night and throughout my career, I had the opportunity to play in front of many Hopkins alumni who have put banners on these walls and have contributed in some other way to make Hopkins one of the best high schools in the state. That's why choosing a recipient for the Distinguished Alumni Award is a difficult decision for my class to make. Tonight's recipient and I have a couple of things in common. We are Hopkins Academy state champions and we busted our butts working on the Kelly Farm. He told me how incredibly proud he is to be from Hadley and how much he loved his time at Hopkins. He graduated from Hopkins in 1987 and earned a bachelor's degree in economics from UMass Amherst in 1991. He received his master's degree in economics from Princeton University in 1993 and a PhD in 1995. He taught for years at Cornell University and published many books. He has a long resume. He married his high school sweetheart and has two beautiful children. And this year, he was inaugurated as the 11th president of the University of Richmond. I'm excited to present the Distinguished Alumni Award to Kevin Halleck. <laughs> Mr. Halleck was unable to make it to this event, or this evening, due to prior commitments. His niece, Kaylee McKenna, Hopkins class of 2011, will be accepting the award on Mr. Halleck's behalf. Congratulations. So Kevin wrote a speech. Um, please uh, forgive me, I'm a kindergarten teacher, so I'm not used to talking in front of this many adults. Uh, <laughs> I stood right here in this place 35 years ago. This week, when I was graduating from Hopkins. On that day, I also had the great good fortune to be able to speak to the people assembled in this room. For those of you who were here that day, and I suspect there are some, I'm sorry you have to suffer through listening to my words twice. I learned about this great honor two months ago, and I am humbled by it. I am sorry I could not be with you today in person due to a commitment I have scheduled for a year. I speak about my pride in being associated with Hadley and Hopkins Academy all the time. I speak about the great teachers I had in math, economics, and history. I speak about the values instilled in me from the community of hard work, empathy, and giving people the benefit of the doubt. I speak of my pride I have from delivering newspapers for the Daily Hampshire Gazette and from picking cucumbers and harvesting tobacco at Kelly Farms. And I speak about my pride I feel from playing third base as a sophomore and under the leadership of Coach Baresca, winning a state championship with a group of people who are both incredible athletes and wonderful humans as well. So graduates, do me a favor. Please take some time tonight and tomorrow to reach out to people who have made an impact on your life. Thank them. Tell them how much you appreciate what they have done for you. This will make their day and will also make you feel good too. I also have a few bits of advice for you. Be kind. Help others when you can, and be kind to others. Be safe. Don't do things that are too risky. Too many people depend on you or will depend on you. Work hard and work steady, but please don't work too hard. Stop and enjoy your family, loved ones, and life. Time is short, so enjoy it. There is so much more to life than educational or occupational achievement. Be thankful. Thank those who got you here and helped you through. And no matter how tempting it may be to look ahead, to think of the next thing, remember where you are right now. Look around. Appreciate where you are and remember this moment and this day. And please remember to take care of yourself and look out for other people. Thank you.
Okay, Miss Camusa might be a little mad at me for this one because I'm going off script, but I promise it's nothing crazy. Um, <laughs> I just didn't feel that what I turned in originally was at all suitable for this absolutely monumental person in my life. Back in the summer of 2018 at a camp called Sing This Summer is where I met one of my future best friends, Ada Boutte. We sat on the front steps of one of the Amherst College houses along with some other friends while I recounted an incredibly awkward interaction that I had just had at one of the local shops downtown in which I still get embarrassed about today. Get embarrassed about today. We then all proceeded to eat an alarming amount of candy from CVS and watch a video of a woman named Trisha Paytas explain her side of a breakup story, which we all felt was monumentally pressing in our lives. I never expected that that moment on the steps in front of an Amherst College dorm would lead me to speaking in front of all of these people today. Um, but I guess that's the butterfly effect for you. And so my pleasure to introduce Ada Boutte to everyone here today. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, me. This was a bit touch and go for a second there. I came across my third grade yearbook the other day. I considered it to be an excellent find and eagerly flipped through the black and white 8 by 12 inch pages in search of decade-old friendships, achievements, and inner thoughts that I hadn't seen in so long. Unfortunately for me, third graders do not seem to engage well with the idea of nostalgia, and I found only reminders of random high-scoring book reports and favorite top 40 songs, and a heartfelt, I will see you soon, period, for my dear friend Jared. <laughs> Interestingly, in third grade, Jared wanted to be a singer when he grew up, as did Audrey and Tia, singers. Tanner wanted to be an engineer. Eve wasn't sure what she wanted to do yet. Carter wanted to be a wizard. <laughs> and uh, Chris wanted to be a vegetarian. <laughs> I wanted to be a zookeeper. I'm sure it's becoming clear to you where I'm going with this. Let's just say I've seen Christopher Foster in a few too many Wendy's drive throughs to believe that after nine years, things turned out exactly the way that we wanted them to. <laughs> I spent the majority of high school wondering why no one else cared as much as I did about getting into college. To me, high school was a test run for the real thing, the real education that would dictate my future in a much bigger way. I spent my time collecting bullet points for my resume, even though I really couldn't spare any more attention, and I was often convinced that a subpar English essay would, in fact, ruin my life forever. I worked a month to remember enough math to come up with an SAT score I could be proud of. I planned a college essay I thought was foolproof. I had my answers, my hypothetical ducks in a row, and my future was almost tangible. The fact that I am not going to college in the fall felt for a long time like I was a plane on the verge of takeoff that somehow fell cleanly off the face of the earth, even though in actuality, I perhaps hit turbulence at the very beginning of a very long flight. Nine years ago, I wanted to be a zookeeper. Four years ago, I thought I'd be a lawyer. Last year, I was combing through colleges, hoping to find even one that I felt excited about. And now I'm standing on the stage beside all of you at the very end of this test run. And I don't have a single clue what I'm going to do next. And if there's one lesson I wish I'd learned sooner, it's that that really is fine. You will never have any idea about what will happen next. And gone now are the years of well-socialized hierarchy and designated lunch periods. The future is inconceivable in every possible way. If you attended class night, you heard me encourage my peers to approach life with wisdom, kindness, humor, and class. Tonight, I will encourage them further. Approach life with open arms and embrace the present wholeheartedly. Sit quietly in your seat and thrum with the potential energy that will carry you to the end, and listen for the shuffling of your friends and family, and be reminded of your time here so far, your time in this gym even, pummeling juniors with dodgeballs, and allow yourself to consider, just for a moment, 
that life is only everything that has happened so far, and there is nothing after it, and there is nothing left to define you, and nothing left to know. And then be pleasantly surprised by this next moment, and this one, and this one, and all of the moments after. I will not continue to take up these moments, but as the last speaker of the night, and as the last speaker on behalf of the senior cabinet of the class of 2022, while it is still in office, I would like to take this opportunity to set some precedent for the coming years. To the teachers, remind every class that follows us that they will never be better than us. And also, <laughs> stop giving homework. <laughs> Stick around for a while, even though I know it's going to be hard to teach classes without their lovely shining faces in them. There aren't words for how you've changed my life, and I hope others will be able to stay the same. To the students, do not sit idly while injustice grows in this country. Use every resource available to you and some that aren't to do the work you believe needs to be done. I, for one, want to eat less meat, especially after Lucy and Pema's TED Talk for AP Lang. To the powers that be, stop taking everything so seriously. And to the yearbook club, ask next year's seniors what they want to be when they grow up. And you know what? Don't be surprised if someone says vegetarian. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Fazio's band as they play the alma mater. Thank you, Mr. Fazio, that was great. And thank you all for being a part of our celebratory ceremony this evening. As our graduates depart, please remember that we are holding a receiving line in the cafeteria, but please give our students and staff a few minutes to prepare themselves before joining them. Led by our junior class vice president, Jessica Markowski, our graduates are now going to depart to their song of choice, Stand By Me.
Thank you.